Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel and welcome to another ASX CEO interview. Today, we'll be diving back into the health informatics space where welcoming back to the channel once again, the CEO of Alcidian ASX ALC, Kate Quirk. We've had her on the channel before. We've heard the story about Alcidian. Today, we'll be unpacking the most recent quarterly results and discussing the continued growth from the Alcidian story. Kate, welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you once again. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, great to see you again. It is always a pleasure to have you back. Of course, we're familiar with the Alcidian story, but can you give us that refresher about who is ASX ALC and also where are you currently positioned after, of course, the pandemics, the lockdowns and everything that's been going on in the world? So as many of your viewers will know, Alcidian's a um, dedicated healthcare IT informatics company. We're really focused on using the data available in healthcare to support the transformation of healthcare. Obviously, from a perspective, a worldwide perspective, healthcare has undergone some pretty um, amazing pressure in the last couple of years. Uh, and we've certainly been seeing the drive and the need for doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals to have better access to information so that they can make you know, more rapid changes in, in decision-making. I think the big focus is very, very much around how do we treat patients more efficiently? How do we get more throughput through the system? But probably more importantly, how do we treat people outside the hospital? So I think for us, that's been a really um, interesting opportunity. We're still obviously going to treat patients in hospital and we're still going to do all of the things that we've done there. But now we've got this emerging opportunity to deliver a lot more care that is really patient centric, that is in their home, that is safer and also avoids, um, you know, being exposed to potential um, infections like, like COVID. So that's been a big, a big opportunity and something we're seeing as a really emerging um, uh, market for us. For sure. And I think it's quite interesting with my precision and the different offerings that Alcidian can provide. It's quite modular in nature. And you actually referenced that in your last quarterly report, setting the opportunities to upsell and cross-sell. To help conceptualize that for the viewers, can you give some ideas about the different types of modules and how that cross-selling opportunity goes as you add them on with customers? Yeah, that's great. That's a great question. My precision is the platform. And then out of that capability, we have some we have the ability for other people to use that data, but we've created capabilities around patient flow. And I see big emerging opportunities around that. Um, it, that's really around how do we move patients more efficiently through the system from getting them into hospital and out. And I'm sure some of your viewers will have seen hospitals, uh, ambulances ramped up on the news recently. Um, you know, how do we efficiently do that? Um, so we have patient, we have customers who buy just the flow and bed management capabilities of my precision. And then after using the system for a while, they might say, actually, now we want to really use it to support our clinical care. And we want to add in your clinical decision support modules or what we call Maya logic. Um, and so they, they can then add that module on um, in terms of what they're doing. There might be some customers who use patient track, which is our nursing capability. We we now brand that Meyer observations and assessments. So maybe they're really focused on capturing all of that nursing data, which is very valuable data to feed the platform. And more recently, um, the capability of virtual care or hospital in the home, or, or um, and, and we recently announced uh, a, a contract with Sydney Local Health District uh, for the RPA virtual hospital to use Meyer Precision as their virtual care platform. And we started with COVID patients, but that's now going to be uh, rolled out to diverticulitis patients and uh, ultimately to diabetes patients and the sorts of patients that are what we call frequent flyers to healthcare. Um, the ones that go in and out of hospital, we'd much rather the opportunity to keep them at home. So all of those capabilities are modular and you can start with one, two or all of those um, but and add on over time. And of course, that's culminated in the recent results. Continued sustained growth is something we've seen out of our city and continuing. And that's, again, I think you're 17% ahead of where you were on the previous quarter last year. Can you talk about the results and how you're feeling as a CEO about where you're positioned with it all? Yeah, we're happy with the continued momentum coming back off a big year in um, FY21 um, of significant growth. Um, healthy pipeline continuing to, uh, to grow and mature with new opportunities adding into it across Australia, uh, New Zealand and the UK. A um, lot of activity in the UK with the funding that's been recently announced. Um, 2.1 billion of a $5.3 billion healthcare package. 2.1 of that being really focused on digital health. So, um, you know, we, we expect to continue to see LCD and taking their share of that, um, of that opportunity through uh, supporting the modernisation of the NHS. 
Um, and as I said, closer to home, we see those opportunities around virtual care um, as well. So we're, we're happy with where we're at. Um, we're very cyclical in nature, as many of your um, listeners will be aware of, and that you know our first quarter is usually the beginnings to build the pipeline builds through the second quarter. And we often see a lot of our contracts convert in Q3 and Q4, which lines up with the end of financial years. So we're tracking you know, ahead of where we were um, same time last year. So we're very happy with the progress today. And you've talked about it there. It can be quite cyclical in nature. Obviously, there's so many different opportunities for Alcidian to pursue, whether it's adding on new modules, whether it's new locations, new types of customers. Can you talk about some of those key growth levers that you think investors should be looking forward to over this next year and ahead? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Because we do, we're not just a single capability from the platform and we're not just a single product line. So that gives us entry points into our markets at multiple levels. Some of your uh, listeners will be aware of our South Tees contract, which we signed um, last year for the whole Maya platform, which ultimately was about 11 and a half million TCV. Then we can sign a smart page contract that might be, you know, 500, 700,000 TCV over a similar amount of time. So we have this opportunity to have um, multiple components of our platform at, at, at all different levels. So I think, I think um, people should be looking for us um, to convert uh, obviously, uh, the Australian Defence Force contract that still is waiting to be um, to signed, but they'll also be looking for us to uh, to sign more my precision contracts in the UK um, and some more uh, virtual care type uh, contracts in in this part of the world and potentially some my flow opportunities. There are opportunities in all our markets um, in terms of the pipeline, and I think I said in the quarterly that we are work, walking through and working through moving some of those um, in, you know, into the contract phase. So I guess uh, listeners will be looking forward to, to, to seeing those convert into announcements. For sure. And even though it is quite cyclical in nature, you still definitely had a couple of big contract wins at the back end of last quarter. Can you talk about what some of those contract wins meant and also how viewers should be looking at the models of how they were actually delivered and what they could mean for future contracts as well? So true. So Sydney LHD, which I've talked about a little bit, you know, really important we did a pilot with them to start off with during COVID. They were then required to go to a full um, competitive tender. So again, we tested the market and Alcidian came out as being their preferred provider there. Um, in, a, in a market that's actually got quite a lot of people talking about their abilities in virtual care, we are very specific about um, the additional capabilities that our decision support and algorithms and AI will provide in this particular market. So it's a real differentiator for us. So it was brilliant to actually be able to go through a competitive environment at the moment and see that convert. Um, the, the other two contracts I want to call out, it was the extension, uh, the new contract for Burton, which is a, a trust in the UK for our extra med solution and the extension of Derby also for the extra med solution. So um, you'll, I think I probably spoke to you around about the time that we announced the acquisition of extra med back in April. Um, and obviously we've bedded that down into, into the, the business and into our city in the UK. So being able to now show the value of, you know, making an acquisition like that, then, then subsequently making uh, not only renewals in Derby, but also new contract sites related to that, I think is uh, really should be demonstrating, um, you know, the decision that we made around that. Um, and, you know, we hope to continue to be able to uh, awaken those customers to the Maya um, capabilities that, that can also bring uh, to them in that, in that market as well. And I know, of course, you can't speak too much about the defence discussion at the moment, but we know that it's coming into this quarter. So there's going to be a some eyes on it. I'd love to just hear some thoughts or some narrative from yourself about why you're most excited about this and why there's so much excitement surrounding it from LCDN. And I can't say a lot about that and, and, and it will go through its um, the, the processes that it needs to go through and, and, and obviously they're confidential. But um, we're still, you know, uh, as we announced back in April, you know, we, we expect and hope that to, to be um, finalised before Christmas or year end. Uh, but for us, you know, I think at the time that we were talking about it, um, I, I highlighted this as being, um, you know, it's a, it's a reinforcement of the actual capability that my precision brings into the healthcare market. It is going to operate as what we call a longitudinal health record of the consolidation of all of the components of healthcare that might be delivered to an, a, an ADF member. Um, and, and it is also a demonstration of us moving out of the adjacent market into adjacent markets. So moving out of the hospital space 
um, into a much wider space. And finally, I think it's our first, it will be our first engagement with the Commonwealth. So we've, we've typically dealt on a state by state jurisdiction. Um, and this will give the Commonwealth of Australia an opportunity to see what Alcidian has to offer in terms of healthcare technology. For sure, it's an exciting time. And I think if we look back at the past 12 months, you must agree, it's been a truly transformative period for, of course, Alcidian itself, but the broader sector, how are you reflecting on all of these trends? And what do you think are some of those that will stay moving forward that will really benefit Alcidian as a company? Yeah, look, it is an exciting time. And, and I've been in healthcare IT for you know a very long time, most of my working career. And I'm not sure I've seen um, the the, the multi, multifaceted sort of interest in, in IT. Often it'll be like at the moment we're doing EMR or at the moment we're doing laboratory systems, but there is movement and activity across the whole sector in terms of the possibilities of IT. And so that's exciting for us. Um, you know, we need to see continued commitment from a funding perspective. Now, you know, very excited about the announcements we've seen out of the UK. Here in Australia, I think we're a little focused on the immediate COVID response. And so that's where we're seeing a lot of investment. And, and thankfully, Alcidian has some uh, capability to bring to bear on, on, on supporting that environment. Um, so I'm really excited about, you know, the fact that it's difficult, I think, to walk backwards from where we've been in terms of IT. It's really also brought the workforce along. You know, we've got a workforce that's under an enormous amount of pressure in healthcare, as we are we often hearing. And, you know, we can't necessarily just keep throwing new people at that. So we need to look at smarter ways of doing things. So I think there's a real emphasis on that. And I, I look forward to seeing kind of the funding and investment follow that in this part of the world as well. It'll be fascinating to see our city and continue to play on the forefront of that transition. We know that there's, of course, a passionate shareholder base for ASX ALC. Just love to hear some final reflections for those who have been watching the journey or some prospective shareholders who might be looking at our city and now. Oh, look, I think, you know, the people that have been with us for some time know that and they are, that they are fairly educated um, retail investor base that understand, you know, what our offering is and how we've matured and evolved and developed over time. Um, I think, you know, they be mindful of we are cyclical in, in nature and that uh, in, in our announcements, as always, we tend to build through the first half and, and the announcements come in the second half, although, as I said, we will continue to see announcements every quarter. Um, we have a lot um, of exciting activity going on um, and, I, and I think uh, for all our existing and future shareholders, this is a very exciting space to be in in healthcare IT at the moment and I don't believe we'll see it go backwards. Um, so, you know, I thank everybody for their, uh, for their ongoing support um, and interest in us and I, and I look forward to continue to keeping uh, the, the, the market apprised of um, our progress. That is the Alcidian story. It's ASX ALC listed on the ASX. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. We make daily videos, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Kate, it's always a pleasure having you on the channel. Look forward to catching up again soon and congrats on another great quarter for Alcidian. Thanks again.